So I've uh, just published this book here, Last Days of Smallpox. Uh, I got interested in this because I used to work at the University of Birmingham and it may surprise most people that the last case of smallpox anywhere in the world wasn't in some faraway tropical clime. It was actually right in the heart of England's green and pleasant land, right in the middle of Birmingham. Um, and there was this event 40 years ago in 1978 where smallpox actually escaped from a research laboratory and a clinical laboratory in, in the University of Birmingham Medical School and infected a photographer who worked in that same building. Um, and uh, I actually got to know the doctor who made the diagnosis back in 1978, uh, who used to work in Birmingham, and he shared his reminiscences of that event, uh, and I wanted to capture that. But the other thing that motivated me to write the book was history records basically that there was an inquiry after the event, which made it look as if it was all cut and dry, that the virus had escaped up a, a ventilation duct. Um, and that the university had been somewhat remiss in, in not maintaining a fully safe environment and so forth. And one of the very sad, tragic aspects of the whole event was that the professor of virology who looked after the lab killed himself in response to the uh, media clamour of media interest um, and the very hostile uh, media reception and public reception of what had happened. I discovered that the university had actually been taken to court by the health and safety executive, uh, but they had won the court case. They were found not guilty, and that intrigued me. So I tracked down the court case transcript from the university archives and read through all 800 pages of it, and it makes fascinating reading uh, as to what actually happened and how the real smallpox experts didn't accept the results of the government inquiry at all. And, and it then became quite a, a, an intriguing mystery as to how this uh, w poor woman actually caught smallpox. Um, and I tracked down some of the other people, the, the QC, the barrister who defended the university, and, and he had some very interesting ideas about what actually happened then. I've tried to keep it accessible to the layperson, but also to satisfy my scientific colleagues and academics, and I hope that it will be of interest to a, a wide variety of people, uh, particularly the, anyone who works in microbiology, anyone interested in infection, anyone who lived in Birmingham in 1978.